Do I look more official? Is there a, maybe there's an official stamp on my forehead. But thank you for all of you who participated in the wonderful service yesterday. Praise God, we are here. We are, we are God's people and congregation called together to serve God. Amen? Amen? Let's center and let's go to the grace. Let's go to the throne of grace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading from Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, <clears throat> forgive the crime of your fathers, of your brothers, and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as God is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, Joseph reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of life.
A reading from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment <clears throat> on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on slaves of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it for the Lord. Also those who eat, eat for the Lord. Since I give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain for the Lord and give thanks to God. For we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your sibling? Or you, why do you despise your sibling? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each one of us will be held accountable. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy seven times. For this reason, the dominion of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, 
His Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay the entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive each other from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and let me invite all of the young people of the congregation to come forward. And as I remind you, anybody who is feeling particularly young is welcome to join us and participate, or participate from where you are. I'm going to ask you guys to sit here today, okay? Can you do that? All right. Thank you. You remember Mr. Eben, right? And um, this is Blair, okay? And they're going to help us understand the message this morning. Are you all set? Oh, we got some more. Hey, Gabe. All right. Very good. Okay. And I'm going to join you. talk about now what did you see see we had some fun with that didn't we right that and if you listen that was the story that Jesus told that I read for us just a moment ago and Mr. Eben and Mr. Blair helped us maybe imagine what it might be like at the cross yeah. do you ever play a game or have you ever heard of a have you ever heard of a relay race? Yeah? Ophelia, what's a relay race? Good, yes, Ophelia knows, and you all know, um, uh, a relay race is you have a baton, you have a stick, 
and there are usually four runners, and they each have to go around the track as fast as they can, but they have to pass the baton one to another. If they drop the baton, they don't win the race, right? Well, I didn't bring a baton this morning. You see what I have, right? It's a cross. And there's a lot we could talk about when we talk about forgiveness. We are people who are all about forgiveness. But what I'd like you to remember on the story today is we are supposed to pass the forgiveness to others. Did the first servant who had all that debt forgiven, did he pass the forgiveness on to the other servant? No, no he didn't. And so what I'd like to do is would you stand up and make a semicircle right here? And I brought this cross, and we're going to just use it for just a moment and hand it around like a baton in a relay race, because it's supposed to remind us that we pass our forgiveness on, that as God forgives, we pass our forgiveness on. And it's a glass cross, isn't it? So if we drop it, love risks. <laughs> if we drop it, what might happen to it? Gets broken. And we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with you. And you, can you hold that? Hold on. And now you hand it on. To, there we go. And hand it on. And again to Gabe and Leslie, Julia, and to me. Right? And that's a reminder that God forgives us so much and we are to pass it on to others. Can you remember that? Pass on God's forgiveness. Want to say that with me? Pass on God's forgiveness. Very good. Let's pray. Fold our hands. I'm going to say some words for prayer and you please repeat them and all of you help us and repeat them too, okay? Here we go. Dear God, Thank you for such great forgiveness. Thank you for such great forgiveness in Jesus our Savior. In Jesus our Savior. May we share that forgiveness. May we share that forgiveness with all those around it, with all those around us, and pass on your love. And pass on your love. Amen. Thanks, you guys. All righty. Go on back. All right. So I got this whole sermon here, and if you just remember that, you will have done well. Amen? <laughs> okay. Dear church, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our living Savior. Amen, amen. Well, let me share that, uh, of course, um, when we preacher types prepare sermons, we look around for ideas, and we have some resources. With the Thursday Bible group, I've shared some of the things where, some of the places where I go and some of the subscriptions I have. And one of the places that I go sometimes for help with understanding the scriptures or preparing a sermon and sharing with all of us here is um, our seminary in Minnesota, Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, has something called The Working Preacher. And they've got some podcasts, and they've got commentary online. And, and they also have a blog online. And what a, most of you would know what a blog is. It's really just kind of sharing your thoughts and putting it out there on the internet. And uh, Professor Christoph von Kaufmann is a professor of New Testament at Luther Seminary. And so I really was struck by his blog post a few weeks ago, and I want to share it with you. He writes this meditating and thinking about our gospel lesson this morning. Professor Kaufman writes, September 2nd, 2020. On that day, Kang Kink Lu, alias Comrade Duke, died. This may not have been a news item that resounded with you, 
But as a Cambodian, it hit home for me. As a member of the Khmer Rouge, Comrade Duke headed the notorious Tol Sleng prison. By his own meticulous record keeping, he was responsible for the torture and death of over 15,000 people. Along with several other prominent Khmer Rouge officials, the United Nations Supervised Tribunal convicted Kang Kek Lu for war crimes and crimes against humanity. The trial and the sentencing took place while I was in college. Though I followed along, it did not make much of an impact on me. It was only when he died, when I reread the testimony, that my life changed. You see, Kang Kek Lu differed from other Khmer Rouge leaders in two intimately connected ways. The first was in 1996, while still a free man, Kang Kek Lu was baptized and became a Christian. The second is that he confessed to his crimes and asked for forgiveness. All of the other Khmer Rouge leaders who appeared before the tribunal refused to take responsibility for their actions and denied that they had committed any crimes. I don't know if a week has gone by since then where I have not thought of Kang Kek Lu, his confession and his request for forgiveness. The Khmer Rouge offered no forgiveness to those who they saw as perpetrators of oppression, including members of my own family. But as a Cambodian and as a Christian, I know that Kang Kek Lu's request for forgiveness is directed at me. So I asked Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive? As many as 15,000 times? He stretches my ability to forgive to its limits. But at the same time, he puts me to shame. How is it that I am ashamed to ask my sisters and brothers in Christ to forgive the small wrongs that I have done when Kang Kek Lu had the courage to own and to ask for forgiveness for all the wrongs he had committed? I think you can see how I was moved by this story, right? And how poignant it is in meditating and thinking about Jesus' words in Matthew 18. Professor Kaufman's writing really struck me at not only as poignant, but also in a very contemporary way. It brought home the radical challenge of Jesus' words in the Gospel text this morning. Um, I searched about for other um, stories and ideas about forgiveness and commentaries on this text. And, one of, and doing that led me also to reading about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa. It's the process and, um, of telling the truth about the atrocities of apartheid in the years gone by and then reconciling, asking for forgiveness, owning what happened, asking for forgiveness, seeking reconciliation. And yes, that sometimes inflammatory and difficult word, but important word, reparations. Unfortunately, right now, probably the process of truth and reconciliation in South Africa is stalled because some of the really large, influential lights who led that, Mandela, Tutu, have passed on. And there has not arisen somebody who has that, that amount of influence and character with the whole population to move it forward. But while it was moving forward, it had incredible lessons. One of the most important that I realized as I read is that truth is needed for forgiveness. And I would draw our attention to what we do here almost every time we gather here on Sunday morning from the baptismal font that we did again this morning. How many other places do we pause and say, I am a sinner? or God, I need you, 
And that's what we did. And there's that moment of awkward silence where I'm supposed to be thinking about, yeah, what did I do? And God, I do need you. Where else do we do that? And that is central to who we are. And that is central to the community of Jesus' followers. Truth, followed by forgiveness. And last week's lesson, the hard work of reconciliation. We hear the good news, and I pray that when you hear that good news announced every time, it lifts the burdens in your life, for you are truly forgiven, made whole. And so often, though, so often for all of us, our forgiveness is, uh, oh, never mind, or oh, it's okay, or... And, you know, actually that minimizes forgiveness, doesn't it? To say, oh, don't worry about it. Has that really healed something if you really felt wronged? That forgiveness can, honest forgiveness and truth can be hard work. Amen? Right. And I also, I really had some moving moments, even I'll admit tearful moments, reading about some of the powerful stories of forgiveness. And you know some of them that have been in the news in recent years. I think of the Emmanuel 9, right? Folks in a Bible study welcome a stranger into their midst and he sits there for an hour with them and then shoots everybody. And yet that church reached out to that family and most all said, we forgive. Or I think of the Amish school shooting in Pennsylvania a few years ago. Ten little girls shot, five killed. And that community embraced the family of the shooter and forgave. It's my understanding, I, I don't know the most recent part of the story, but it's my understanding that they continued to bring, this sounds a lot like Lutherans, right? Covered dishes <laughs> and visit with the family. There's some of the families also of the Sandy Hook shooting. You know, all those kindergartners terrorized and murdered. And not everyone to a person, but many of those families have found healing in forgiveness. Our first scripture reading this morning, did you catch that? Story of Joseph. It's the culmination of the story of Joseph. Yeah, it's that Joseph, you know, with the Technicolor dream coat. Already, J -J Joseph, you know what they say, you know the musical. It's that Joseph. And his story goes from 13 chapters in Genesis, from Genesis 37 all the way to Genesis 50. And if you don't know the story, sit down sometime and read it, right? Hollywood couldn't produce such a movie. Joseph is the most beloved of Jacob's sons. And he is hated by his envious brothers. Angry and jealous of Jacob's gift to Joseph, a resplendent coat of many colors, the brothers seize him and sell him into slavery. Some families do have their problems. And this is the backstory to how the people of Israel come into Egypt. What would you have done if you were in Joseph's sandals? I think about myself, and if I'm honest with myself, I would relish the amazing reversal of circumstances. I would delight in making them all squirm and make their lives difficult. Could I forgive them for all that suffering? Or could I forgive them for having nearly died multiple times far from family or anything familiar? Remembering our gospel this morning, that is from Jesus' fourth great discourse, lecture of the five in Matthew. And it is a lecture to his disciples, to us, on how we live as the people of God, how we live as the forgiven, beloved community of faith, how we are to live out our calling following Jesus. Did you catch, I think we've heard the story so many times that we miss it, but did you catch how extreme this story is? The word talent is the largest amount possible. 
It's the biggest word for amount in Greek. It would be like, like a gazillion. We don't have a word big enough. A talent represents about 15 years, one talent represents about 15 years of labor. Can't you hear Jesus say 10,000 talents and the crowd goes, huh, what? That's 100 million hours of labor. Got time this week? Hmm? Right. It's extreme. The forgiveness of the king is extreme. The, the unforgiveness of the first slave is extreme. Jesus is shaking up his audience. And we need to recognize that too. Forgiveness is extreme. What Jesus has done for us is extreme in the most wonderful way. We've heard this so often, perhaps we miss that. But forgiveness and reconciliation are to move us beyond individual conflict resolution. Debt and forgiveness, or the lack of it, affects all of those around us also. It's not just individual things. In our, in our Western culture, we often think it's, okay, this is just us, right? But the community is affected, and we're called to community. Think of how, if in that story, the slave had actually been sold into slavery and to, other, to somebody else with his family. That had community, that had family consequences. Um, Professor Michael Joseph Brown, in his commentary on Matthew, which is a part of True to Our Native Land, it's an African-American commentary on the New Testament, he says this about the parable. This parable highlights the idea that life should be understood as interconnected. Practices of social interaction that maintain dominance of some over others or that liberate some to the detriment of others are to be renounced as immoral and inconsistent with divine character. Or to quote a personal favorite, and I betray my generation, singer-songwriter Don Henley, all the things I knew I'm learning again. I've been trying to get down to the heart of the matter. I got company. I've been trying to get down to the heart of the matter. But my will gets weak, my thoughts seem to scatter, but I think it's about forgiveness. And the song is called The Heart of the Matter. Forgiveness. This does not mean we justify abuse. Unlimited forgiveness is not to be confused with sentimental toleration or hurtful behavior. Ending of transgression and the safety of the victims are paramount. Forgiveness is not forgetting. The king did not forget the debt he forgave. Right? Forgiveness is not a one and done, but it is a long and messy process. Relationships take time to repair and require commitment, safety, trust, Later in Matthew, chapter 22, we're going to hear in a few weeks how Jesus summarizes what God expects. He quotes Deuteronomy 6, and he says that he summarizes the Mosaic law, and he says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And the center of doing that is forgiveness. In God's forgiveness and in passing that forgiveness along. Remember my little crystal cross, okay? <laughs> Earlier in Matthew, we heard the Sermon on the Mount, the first discourse Jesus gave. And we will pray again in a few moments that comes from that discourse. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. That opening discourse, that first and that prayer we call the Lord's Prayer is a lens in which we see all of Jesus' actions and the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Forgiveness is an invitation, dear sisters and brothers, an invitation into the vulnerable power and love of God to let go of revenge, let go of anger, let go of retribution, however justified it may be, and take a chance on the possibility of either a renewed relationship or at least a release from the oppression of anger 
and resentment, that poison that I take myself thinking it will hurt somebody else. Forgiveness should never be taken lightly. To do so undermines the severity of it. Are we being honest in the Lord's Prayer when we ask for forgiveness as we forgive? If we don't forgive, then perhaps, according to the parable, are we not forgiven? Forgiveness is about a spirit of gratitude. Gratitude to God. Gratitude, the acknowledgement of equal sinfulness before God. It levels the playing field. All of us need Jesus. And it also levels aspects of power. We are all condemned, and we are all offered grace. That's why we're here. If we think we deserve grace more than someone else, then we begin us down a slippery slope that leads away from forgiveness, away from the love of neighbor, to classism and division. This may be personal opinion, but I hope it resonates. So much of our national division now is an inability to forgive, a decision to see those who are different from us as evil and as unforgivable wherever you fall on the political spectrum. It is a politics of anger and resentment, and yet sometimes in the next breath, I will hear somebody say, God bless America, or claim to speak for God. Back to Dr. Kaufman, where we started this morning. He also writes, I am haunted by forgiveness. Dear working preacher, he's writing to us clergy types, but I love it for all of us. By my own inability, I'm haunted to forgive small slights and my own capacity to justify my indignation instead of asking for forgiveness. So, dear church, where is the power? Where is the motivation for such radical behavior as genuine forgiveness of ultimate consolation and wholeness for total healing and new beginning? I believe you know where, and I know where, and I need to hear it again and again, and we need to hear it again and again. We need to hear it this morning. In our baptism, we are connected to the death and resurrection of Jesus, who took the radical path of service and sacrifice. It is in Christ who offers us life that there is a fresh start. It is in Christ who calls us to a lifetime of sacrifice, of service. It is in Christ who offers us a lifetime of love and forgiveness in a community that is centered in him and his reconciliation. Those communities I mentioned earlier who were able to forgive such horrible wrong, many of them, I would say all of them, though I don't know them all personally, live in a spirit of forgiveness. It is the fabric of who they are. That is the fabric of who we are to be as the community of Christ and the people of God. That is what binds us together in all of our different opinions and backgrounds. Forgiveness is not just a surface, oh, it's okay. But it is a transformation of life, a rich, abundant life, now and into eternity, into the presence of God. Dear church, the debt is erased. You are forgiven. Go and do thou likewise. Amen. And now may the peace of God, far surpassing our human understanding, Keep our hearts and our minds in Jesus to eternal life. Amen.
As listed on page 16 of the ELW, this week we commemorate Hildegard of Bingen, Dag Hammarskjöld, and the evangelist Matthew. And we remember before God the life of Judy Frank and pray for her family. We respond to each petition with the words from today's psalm, be merciful to us. Mindful of St. Matthew, whom we commemorate this Thursday, we thank God for the gospel according to Matthew that so many Christians around the world are reading this year. And we pray, bless all pastors in their preaching and all the baptized in their Bible studies, that Matthew's message may be alive in the churches today. Gracious God, be merciful to us. Mindful of Hildegard of Bingen, whom we commemorate today, we thank God for the greenness and creation that she wrote about. And we pray, save the Shenandoah National Park and all forests that are threatened with fire and protect the crops needed to feed those who hunger. Creative God, be merciful to us. Mindful of Dag Hammarskjöld, whom we commemorate today, we thank God for all organizations that work for world peace. And we pray, strengthen the United Nations, bring an end to the war in Ukraine and to gun violence in our land, protect democracies the world over. Sovereign God, be merciful to us. Mindful of the Jewish people during their high holy, holy days, we thank God for their many gifts to the wider society. And we pray, grant our Jewish friends a year of health and wisdom in dealing with the state of Israel. Faithful God, be merciful to us. Mindful of all of those who seek healing, we thank God for the development of another COVID vaccine. And we pray for our neighbors who face illness of any kind and who live with chronic pain, mental illness, or the agonies of addiction. Bless the recovery efforts in Monaco and Libya and comfort the mourners. Hear now the names we call out to you. Merciful God, be merciful to us. Mindful of our congregation, we thank God for the ministry of Pastor Harry. And we pray, show us how we are to testify to your mercy in our daily lives and here in Arlington County. Beloved God, be merciful to us. Mindful of all the saints, especially today, Hildegard of Bingen, we thank God for the ways that have led us in the faith. And we pray that at our end, we join with them in your presence forever. Eternal God, be, be merciful, merciful to, to us. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We greet one another with the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary. It is our duty and our delight and our joy that we should, at all times, in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and with the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. From age to age, your creation sings your praises. You feed even the birds of the air, and you clothe the fields with lilies. You gave your blessing to Abraham and his descendants, and you spoke with Moses, Elijah, and David. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You fulfilled your covenant with us in Jesus. He is Emmanuel, your beloved son the star that guides us to wisdom, the treasure hidden in a field. He is the landowner who overpays the workers, the judge who separates good from evil. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God. For us he lived, for us he died, and for us he rose to eternal life. Then and now he invites us to your banquet. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We hear his call, we repent our ways, and we enter into, with joy into the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Send your Holy Spirit here on your gathered disciples. Make of this meal the body and blood of forgiveness. Heal us and grant us your righteousness, that we may love you and serve our neighbors. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Indeed, blessed are you, Lord our God, our Father in heaven, the rock on which we build, the dove alighting on us all. We worship you and sing our praises today and to the end of the age. Amen. 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 Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
And now may this true body and true blood of our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for announcements. All right, good morning, everybody. So today is the last chance to donate your undies and books for the Undie Sunday collection. Uh, so thank you to everybody who brought some. I saw the, the very full bins out in the narthex, so it's great. <coughs> Um, and a quick reminder that we're reiterating our COVID policies. Uh, there's been a slight uptick in kind of transmission going around. And so we're going to try to have all the communion assistants and the pastor during communion distribution um, be masked up in case there are people who are uh, extra sensitive in our population. But general masking is still optional according to your wishes. Um, a few save the dates, October 1st for our pet blessing. So you're welcome to bring your pets along. Uh, you can view worship in the parish hall downstairs uh, via the internet link. And then uh, we'll have a gathering outside after the, the um, service for a blessing. And then that will actually be followed by a adoption fair as well in cooperation with the Homeward Trails Rescue Organization. So spread the word if you know anybody looking for a, a new companion. Um, October 21st is the crop walk. So uh, we're looking for walkers and sponsors. Uh, so please uh, inquire any members of the social ministry committee can, can fill in any blanks about that. Um, and then the last chance to sign up for a uh, pastor, or sorry, breakfast with Pastor Harry. Um, that will be September 30th, so uh, two weeks from yesterday, I believe, um, is the last one. So there's a sign up outside in the Narthex or online. Thank you very much. Let me invite you to stand. I will add one more announcement, and it's a heartfelt thank you to many of you who are here today. Uh, uh, for uh, thank you for yesterday. A lot of folks uh, contributed their part, their piece. Uh, I probably, I could never name everybody who did. And we had a wonderful celebrative uh, gathering. I very much appreciate the effort everybody put forward. And uh, we look forward and pr to praising God and working together to lift up the gospel of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Very good. Receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.